Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Eric Candy here today. We are back with another Darkness of Blaze deck profile for the post rotation format. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at Scissor VMAX, one of the more, I think, like underrated or more slept on VMAXs that we're getting in this set. And so what we have here today is kind of like a toolbox deck of sorts, but kind of with a heavy emphasis on Scissor. Uh, and then a bunch of healing and tanking options to ensure that we can just survive a bunch of hits with all of our big sturdy metal Pokemon that we're gonna be playing in this deck. And also, too, if you guys want to see Scissor VMAX in action in the next day or so, we will have some matches uploaded with this. So check back whenever those go live. I will have a link down below in the description whenever those get posted. But with that being said, let's hop into the actual deck profile and see how Scissor is going to look. So to kick things off, we have two copies of Scissor V, of course. Uh, and Scissor V is actually better than a lot of the normal sort of pre-evolutions we sometimes see on these VMAXs. Specifically, in the case of the first attack, it does 30 damage, and then you can discard a special energy or tool card from your opponent's active, which is pretty nice. Special energies, I think, are going to just gradually see more and more play. You know, Rebel Clash gave us a host of great energies. We're getting some more new ones in this set, like the new uh, special dark colors and fire energies. So I think this first attack actually does have a decent amount of value to it. Uh, and Think of something like Eternatus, for an example. They need two manual attachments to get powered up, unless they're playing something like Weavile, just as an example. If all they have is a capture energy or like a like a hide energy or whatever it's called, and you can take that off turn one, that can set your opponent back an entire turn before they start attacking. Uh, the other attack is just two metal on a for a flat 140. Also not horrible, but like obviously the first attack is really the one we want to uh, use if we are going to attack with Scissor V. But going on from there, we have two copies of Scissor VMAX as well. So Scissor VMAX, this is going to be its evolution, 320 HP, and has two kind of interesting attacks. They're both, I think at a glance, kind of underpowered, but uh, you know, once we look at some of the other options we have in this deck, I think these attacks become a little bit better. But the first one for a Metal and Colorist is 90, and you reduce your damage on your opponent's next turn by 30. And then its other attack for two Metal and Colorist just does a flat 190. So. Ideally, we're just trying to tank hits with this deck. We also play things like Lucario Mel Metal and other ways at reducing our damage. So between all of those, this first attack actually can be pretty decent, even though it's only hitting for 90. So that's going to be Scizor. Like I said, it's a 320 HP Pokemon already. So between this and its other tanking and healing options, it's going to be around for a few turns before it goes down. Uh, up next, though, we do have one copy of Zacian V. Zacian's just it's blatantly too good not to play if you're a metal deck. Of course, has the Intrepid Sword attack. You can end your turn and then uh, look at the top three cards of your deck, attach any metal energies you find there to Zacian, keep the other cards. Uh, so that's fine. Also, Brave Blade is a solid attack, 230 for three metal, and you can't attack on the next turn. So this does hit a little bit harder than Scissor V. Definitely can be nice at uh, knocking out those opposing Pokemon V or Pokemon uh, GX. Uh, that Scizor might not be able to quite one-shot sometimes. So Zacian, obviously a great backup attacker and a good uh, consistency booster with its ability. But we also are playing one copy of Zamazenta V. Zamazenta is a card I think is only gradually going to get better from here on out with, you know, as we get more and more V maxes added into the game. But it has this ability, it prevents the damage done to it by your opponent's Pokemon V max. So think of things like Eternatus. They really don't play many great ways at dealing with this uh you know th th they might play like a hoopa or two but i mean other than that by and large zamazenta is going to be very difficult for them to get through i mean think of other decks like dragapult vmax of the past really hasn't played like any other attackers other than the vmax which can only hit for 60 damage max so this this uh, ability very very good uh, i think in this format it's attack also not too bad for two metal and chorus is 130 and you discard a special energy from your opponent's active. So just a nice little, you know, attack we can soften them up with, maybe discard some energy in the process, but the ability is really the main reason we're playing the Zamazenta here. Up next from there, we have one copy of Lucario and Mel Metal GX, uh, mainly playing this for the full metal wall GX attack for a chorus energy. It reduces your damage done to your metal Pokemon by 30 for the rest of the game. But if you have an additional energy, then you can discard all of your opponent's energy. So we have actually um, quite a good bit of different energy denial cards that really honestly wasn't intentional, but we do have some disruption uh, options in the form of some of these different attacks. So getting that minus 30 on all of our opponent's attacks for the rest of the game is really the main reason we're playing this thing. 
Uh, up next from there though, we have one copy of the Duraldon back from Rebel Clash. So it has this first attack for a Colorist is 30 and you attach a metal from discard to one of your Pokemon. And then second attack for two metal Colorist does 110. This is can sometimes be a nice Pokemon to lead the game with, maybe just to get in some chip damage, get some energy in play. But also this is kind of like our counter to Decidueye if Decidueye does start to see play. Drawdown is actually a really good counter, especially in this deck, because even though this is really one of our only ways to counter the deck, it's very difficult for them to actually do damage. Uh, we have the minus 30 resistance, the minus 30 uh, reduction from full metal wall. We have other healing cards in the deck, other damage reduction cards. This one Duraldon can honestly take quite a few prizes. So if you're able to get some cheap prizes with some of your other attackers, uh, Duraldon can maybe come in and sort of close out the game for you. So that's what it's mainly in there for. We do also have one copy of Oranger with that Primate Wisdom ability. Of course, we can put a card from hand uh, and replace it with the top card of our deck. So if we're playing a research or something like that, it can sometimes be nice to protect those metal saucers or whatever it might be from getting discarded sometimes. Uh, we also have a copy of the Denny GX, of course, to discard our hand and draw six. You know, we play metal energy in this deck, so discarding those metals, always good to be able to get back out of the discard with metal saucer. Then we have Crobat V, of course, the new uh, consistency boosting two prizer from the new Darkness of Blaze set. Uh, much like with the Dene, you can't use more than one of these abilities in a turn, but you get to draw until you have six. So sometimes if you don't want to discard your whole hand, Crobat can be nice instead of the Dene. And also, of course, I think it's better just to play one of each of these instead of two of either one, because let's say you Dede change your hand, you discard it, draw six, and you still miss, you know, whatever that key card is you're looking for, you can keep digging with a with a Crobat, whereas you wouldn't be able to with a second Dene GX. And then to round out our Pokemon, guys, we have one copy of Eldegoss V. Of course, whenever we bench it, we can get a supporter card from discard and put it right back into our hand. So, of course, good at getting those late game bosses orders. We also play uh, some other sort of techier, like healing options in here, like Malo and Lana. So that can be good at getting that back as well. But going on to our trainer cards, we have four copies of Professor's Research. Just a nice discard and draw seven. Of course, tossing away metal energies is good so we can get them out of the discard pile later. Uh, we also have four copies of Marnie. These are probably the best sort of generic draw options that we have right now in the game. So Marnie, of course, you have both players shuffle their hands, put them at the bottom of their decks. You draw five, your opponent draws four. A little bit of disruption, and also we don't have to discard our hand, which is kind of nice. Uh, we have three copies of Boss's Orders just to switch our opponents active with one other bench Pokemon just to choose what we want to take knockouts on in the deck. And we also have two copies of Mallow and Lana as well to round out our supporter cards. So Mallow and Lana is another way we can ensure that we're going to stay alive for another turn or two. So of course the supporter card, you just switch your active with one of your bench Pokemon, but if you discard two cards from hand, you heal 120 in the process. So just trying to make it as hard as possible for our opponent to take these knockouts on our Pokemon. Going on to our items, we have four copies of Quick Ball, of course, just to find our basic Pokemon, but we also have four copies of Pokemon Communication in the deck as well, uh, just because there's no way to actually search out Scissor V Max uh, without just drawing into it naturally. So we need something like this, or maybe even Evolution Incense to do that. You know, even though we don't play a ton of Pokemon, I still think I like Communication a little bit better, just because it gives us the flexibility of grabbing basic Pokemon, uh, not just Evolutions. So of course the, the challenge of the communication, you do need a Pokemon in your hand to put back into your deck. And with a lower count of Pokemon, sometimes it's it doesn't work quite as frequently as Evolution Incense, but I really just like the, the added flexibility of it a lot more. Going on, we have four copies of Metal Saucer, another staple for our metal decks. We attach a Metal Energy from discard to one of our benched metal Pokemons. So of course, just to ensure we can keep our attackers powered up throughout the course of a game. And up next from there, we have four copies of Metalcore Barrier as well. Another uh, bit of metal support, one that we don't usually see too often, especially like in the pre-rotation format. Metal Frying Pan has sort of been the go-to like metal tool of choice, but since we have lost Frying Pan and I don't see a big need for something like Metal Goggles in this deck, 
Metal Corvair, I think, is probably our favorite tool card. So it's a little bit better and a little bit worse than Frying Pan in a couple different ways. So the big thing that kind of sucks about Metal Corvair, you have to discard it at the end of your opponent's turn. But the big thing that makes this card good is that it reduces our damage by 70, which is pretty insane. Compared to Metal uh, Goggles and Metal Frying Pan, that's a plus 40 damage reduction over them. So we're pulling the four count just because we do have to discard them at the end of our opponent's turn. So we want to be able to keep slapping these down every turn if possible. Next up from there, we have three copies of Switch. So all of our Pokemon have kind of clunky retreat costs. You know, Cario Melmetal has three, Zacian has two, I think even Scizor has two. So we definitely need some added mobility in this deck, especially since we are playing Metal Saucer. Very frequently, we need a Pokemon on the discard pile, or I'm sorry, on the bench. That way we can accelerate energy off the discard pile to it and then switch that Pokemon into the active. But even despite that, we're playing two copies of Air Balloon as well. Uh, right now, Air Balloon, I'm choosing to play this just because um, with Metal Saucer in particular, you want that nice pivot Pokemon that you can always promote in between knockouts. So let's say, for example, you have like a supporter in hand, like a research, and you have an Air Balloon. Um, so if you slap Air Balloon down, you can research, then find your Metal Saucer afterwards. But if this was maybe just a four count of switch, a lot of times you would just be discarding these and not actually able to get that nice pivot. So I do like Air Balloon. I think you could maybe cut one of these for a fourth switch, but I definitely at the very least like one copy of this for sure. So of course it's gonna reduce our retreat cost by two. You know, even when that's attached to Lucario Metal, really not a big deal because we're probably gonna have at least one energy on this anyways. So an air balloon is going to effectively allow it to uh, retreat by discarding that one energy. And then from there to round our items, we have one copy of Reset Stamp in the deck as well. So of course, it's gonna force our opponent to shuffle their hand into their deck and draw equal to the amount of prize cards they have remaining. And then the only other card for our trainers is gonna be one copy of Chaotic Swell. We really like Chaotic Swell in this format, especially since Eternus is getting a lot of hype. And if they are gonna be playing Black Market, we definitely need a way to counter that stadium. That's gonna be very, very important. And so just making it harder for our opponent to play the game just in general, it's kind of like a theme in this deck. We're making it hard for them to do damage to us, disrupting their stadiums in the process, also not too bad. But going on to our energies, we have three copies of Weakness Guard Energy. This is a kind of like a necessary evil, I think. Now that we're losing Metal Frying Pan, we do need another way at getting rid of our weakness because the big selling point for Scizor and all these metal Pokemon is the fact that they are very hard to one-shot. But if you're playing against a fire deck, it's gonna be kind of tricky for your deck to actually survive a couple hits. <laughs> so we need weakness card energy. It, it's a colorless energy, but eliminates the weakness attached to the Pokemon it's on. Uh, so what's nice about this, Scizor has a colorless attack cost, Zamazenta has a colorless attack cost, Lucario Melmetal, Duraludon. The only Pokemon that doesn't have any colorless energy in its attack cost is gonna be the one Zacian V we play. So luckily the weakness card energies really aren't gonna be problematic in terms of disrupting our energy consistency we normally have. But of course, we are still playing some basic energies. In total, we are going to be playing three, six, nine copies of metal energy in total to round out our list. Uh, we still want a decent amount in the deck just because we do need to be able to find them to discard with Quick Ball, Research, to be able to Metal Saucer back into play. So I definitely didn't want to skimp too hard on these, even though we are playing the Weakness Guard energies in here as well. So that's going to be our look at the Scizor VMAX deck. You know, metal is starting to become one of those types, almost kind of like fire or lightning, where there's so many good metal attackers in the format now, and there's so much support for this type. It remains to be seen if Scizor can kind of cut through and actually be one of like the premier or go-to metal Pokemon that you're going to be using in your metal deck. So that kind of remains to be seen, but I really do like the tanking potential of Scizor. You know, it's a lot sturdier than Zacian, even though it does hit for slightly less damage. I think a lot of the time it doesn't matter too much because VMAXs, you're gonna have to two shot no matter what, regardless if you're Zacian or Scizor. And the more VMAX heavy the format tends to go, I think the stronger a card like Scizor is going to be, just because the damage difference between Zacian and Scizor starts to matter less at that point. But with that being said, guys, hope you did enjoy this deck profile. Of course, if you did, feel free to like and subscribe and also consider supporting this channel as well by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.